What is up guys? A lot of you have requested a joystick tutorial because apparently a lot of you want to create mobile games. So you win, okay? You win. I cannot take any more. Here is the tutorial about joystick. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyways, before we start, let's take a look at what we're gonna create. And I'm going to hit the play button. We also have this button at the bottom right corner which I can press and pay attention to the player he will attack. So when I press the button, you see he is attacking. I also wanted to show you how you can add a button, not only a joystick, because maybe you also want to have a joystick and then a jump button, a sprint button, shoot button, whatever button. So this is how you can add it or we will see how you can add it. This at the bottom left corner is the joystick, so I can click on it and start moving it. So you see I'm moving it left and right, up and down. Our character is moving towards the direction where we are moving the joystick. He's also rotating towards that direction. And what is most important for you is that this also works on mobile. Now I'm not gonna test it here on mobile, but this also works on mobile. You just put your finger, your thumb on this, start moving it, and voila, things or magic will happen. So let's create this. I'm gonna go in my new Unity editor here where I created an empty project. It's a 3D project because I have the 3D asset that you can, by the way, download because this is the first thing that we're gonna do. Here we have the assets. Now in the assets folder below, I'm saying below because below is the link where you can download it. We have the models and the scripts. Again, go on my website, awesometude.com or link is in the description below. Click there and go and download these assets that you can use to follow the tutorial. You will not see this virtual joystick because we will download this. Don't worry, we will download this in a second. You will only see models and scripts and you will also have the complete project to download as well. So drag and drop this model and scripts here and while we're waiting for them to import, which is pretty fast, but I'm still gonna use that opportunity to say subscribe to the channel, like, comment and share for more cool videos. So here in the models, we're gonna go to our lay folder and here we have our lay Zengxi SK1. So this is the one that we want, not the first one, the second one. So drag and drop our character in the scene. Let me just go here in the scene and filter where the character is. Here is our character. So before we start adding or preparing our character for the movement, because I want to explain this with a character. I don't wanna use a cube or, or a sphere. I also wanna show you how you can animate and stuff like that. So I'm going to rename the character to Lay. I'm also going to right click here and create a 3D cube and I'm going to call this one ground. I'm going to set it 0, 0, 0 for the X, Y, and Z and set the scale X to 100, scale Y to 0.1, scale Z to 100 as well. And let me quickly create here a material. So I'm going to right click folder, so new folder materials. Even though I'm gonna try and make this short tutorial as I can, but I still cannot help it and organize the project. I'm gonna call this one ground. And simply we're just gonna drag and drop the ground material on the ground game object. And we will be able to click on the color palette here and change the color a little bit. This is the only reason why we're doing this. Just so that we can change the color palette. Maybe take the directional light, set it at two. Yeah, I think this is definitely okay. So let me take the main camera. Select Command Shift F. Yeah, this is okay. Maybe set the directional light to 1.5. Voila. But this is not important for our game, but you know me, I'm weird. So let's go back in the models and lay folder and inside of the animations folder right here, everything is prepared already. Just drag and drop this lay Zengxi controller. So select him and drag the controller here in the controller field for the animator. So drag and drop the controller there, voila, we are good to go. Now, we are of course going to add a box collider on him. So select here a box collider and also a rigid body. So both of them. For the rigid body, click on the drop down list for the constraints and freeze the X and Z rotation. So X and Z rotation freeze them. And for the center, of the box collider center Y, we are going to set it at 1.42. So center Y is gonna be 1.42. The X size is going to be 0.61. The Y size is going to be 2.82. And the Z size is going to be 0.4. Voila, this is for creating a collider on our game object. Now you can zoom in and see how that collider looks like, but that's not even important. What's important is that we can now 
go here and we already have imported two scripts. So we have the player animation and we have our camera follow. So I can select the lay game object and now drag and drop the player animation script on him, which will be responsible for animating our lay. And if we go inside of the script, it's nothing special. You will see here just two or two functions to animate the walk and animate the attack. I'm not going to go into this. We did this in numerous tutorials because the point of this tutorial is the joystick and not anything else. I'm also going to select the main camera and attach the camera follow script. Now the camera follow script will search for the player with, with game object with the tag player, as you can see here. So we need to go here and select the lay game object and tag him here with the player tag. Player tag is already available in newer Unity vers versions if you're using 2018 or 17 the player tag is automatically created along with your project. Now for the main camera, we do need to rotate it. So we're going to say 40 for the X rotation and negative 22 for the Y and the offset X is going to be four offset Y 10 and offset Z negative nine. This is everything what we need to do to set this up because if I hit the run button now to preview the game, the camera is behind the player and he is good to go. So he is ready to go. Now, let me quickly go here and right click and create a prefab just so that I don't by accident delete the player for any reason from our game. Now, what is the next thing to do is to go here on the asset store. You see here asset store.unity.com packages, tools, input management, joystick pack link for this will be in the description below. That's why we did not imported even though you have the complete project available and that package this right here is available in that complete project but hey you can download this right here from the asset store you will click on this button here it will not say open unity or open in unity it will say something different like get this asset i'm not sure i forgot but it's free as you can see click here open unity when you click on one time to get the asset then you will click on open unity and this pop-up window will open, then you will click on open unity again and voila, then it will open it here in the asset store from within your unity editor. And let me just find it. Why didn't it open? So open in unity. Come on, open it. Connecting to asset. Yeah, finally, here it is. Now what we need to do is go here below and click on this import. So when you click on the import, it will open this pop-up window to import the package and you're going to click on import here and it will import that into your package or into your project, excuse me. Now, one thing to note, let me just close the asset store now because it is imported. It's right here. Creating a joystick on your own will take a little bit of time. And my advice is to use assets like these that are free of charge. Even if you have to pay some assets, if you're serious about your game and if you're creating something cool, even if you pay for something, that's totally fine, but especially use the free ones to speed up your development progress. Because again, if you try to create this on your own, it will take you a lot more time than if just simply, you see, import this in your project. So let's go here in the hierarchy and right click, go under UI and select the canvas. I'm gonna rename it to UI canvas. So UI canvas. And now we can go into the virtual joystick pack and prefabs inside of that folder and you have the fixed joystick. If I take it and simply drag and drop it as a child of the canvas, bam, this is what we have. Right away we have it. So it's right there. Now we are also going to create a button. So right click on the canvas and go under UI and button. And this one is going to be our attack button. I'm going to delete the text from it and for the circle here, actually for the source image, I'm going to click on this handle, this handle rigid, which is imported with the virtual joystick pack. Now this is not important. I'm going to click on the native size and use the native size. I'm also going to click on the anchor and put hit, put it at a bottom right corner. And the X position is going to be negative 73, maybe a little bit more maybe negative 180 and the position Y is going to be, let's say 50 or actually 100, 200 then, yeah, 200. So negative, let's say here, 280 or 250 and voila, we're good to go. Maybe we can lower it a little bit. 
177 for the position Y. But this is not important. You can do this on your ranking position it wherever you want to position it. This is not important for our game. Let's get to the important part. The important part is that we go here in assets and scripts and right click here and C sharp script. We're going to create player movement. Now the player movement will be attached, of course, on the player himself. So drag and drop it on the lay game object and double click it and open it here in Visual Studio or Mono Developer, whichever one you are using. So let me just tag the class here, hit enter to give a little bit of space. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to create a private rigid body, which I'm going to call my body. Right below, I'm going to create a public float, which is going to be move force, which is going to be 10 by default. We are also going to have a private fixed joystick, which I'm going to call joystick. And we're also going to have a private player animation, which I'm simply going to call anim like this. And you can assume what we're going to do in the awake function. So change start to awake. We are going to say my body is equal to get component, rigid body component. We are also going to say our joystick is equal to game object find with tag. Now you can use game object find, game object with tag, or you can use find with tag, but you need to specify the tag here, which is going to be joystick, but we did not create it. We need to create it here. We also need to say get component, which is going to be our fixed joystick component and we are good to go. Now, click on this right here, duplicate the name, this joystick, because we need to go in Unity and create that tag. So select the fixed joystick here in the hierarchy, go under tag, add tag, click on the plus here and paste the joystick here, click save and voila, it will be right here. So select the fixed joystick and from the drop down list, click on joystick tag to tag it so that this line of code here will work and not give us a null reference exception. And our anim is going to be equal to get component player animation component. Voila, we are good to go. So here in the update, what we need to do is simply this. My body velocity is going to be equal to new vector three, and we need to get the input from the joystick. So we have the horizontal input and the vertical. So for the X, it's going to be joystick dot horizontal multiplied with the move force the y we're not going to touch so it's going to be my body not this here but my body dot velocity dot y and for the z it's going to be joystick dot vertical multiplied with the move force voila this right here this only is going to move our game object you see how simple this is if i go here and if i hit the play button and if I try to move my character, you will see that he is moving and actually he's not moving. But the reason for that is we need to select lay and go here and for this apply root motion, uncheck it and hit apply. By default, this apply root motion is checked. I'm not going to explain about it right now, but just uncheck it. So uncheck apply root motion. I talk about this in my other tutorials. So uncheck apply root motion, hit here the play button and now he will be able to move. You see, he's actually moving. I'm not sure if you see that the ground is getting closer, but we're not animating him. So that's why we don't see it properly. So let's go back here. We're going to simply test if our joystick dot horizontal horizontal is not equal to zero or if our joystick dot vertical is not equal to zero, meaning we are pressing one of these. When we press on the horizontal in any direction, we will either trigger the vertical or the horizontal movement from the joystick. So they have values. You can do something like this here. So you can say print and you can use joystick dot horizontal. This will give a value. You can do the same thing for the vertical. I'm not going to do it right now because it will just take time, but you can do it on your own and see what I'm talking about. So when we have a value greater than zero, only if we are not touching the joystick, we will not, we will have a value zero, but if we are touching the value will be greater or it will not be equal to zero. It will be either negative or positive, but it will not be equal to zero. Similarly, same as with input, same as with input dot get axis and using horizontal or vertical, same thing. If we are pressing the button, we will get a value. If we're not pressing, we will get zero. So when that happens, we will call anim walk is equal to true. 
And below here, we're going to say else, and we're going to say animwalk is now equal to false. Simple as that. Now we can test it out. So if I go back here and if I hit the play button, you will notice that when our character starts moving, he will also start animating. You see he's animating, but you see he's now moving to the left side, but you see how he's moving. He's not facing the left side. Or actually this was the right, now this was, is the left side. And when I go backwards, you see he's like, going literally backwards, not moving his, not rotating to the direction where he is moving. Well, for that, same here, right below where we are animating, we can simply say transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion, look rotation, and this right here will look in the rotation where we specify, and we want to go or look in the movement direction. So we are moving towards the velocity, so the velocity is our movement direction. And this quaternion look, we don't need to know how it works behind the scenes. What we need to know here is that this will make the game object look towards the direction that we specify here. And we're specifying my body velocity, which is the movement direction. Because when we move, the movement direction is our velocity. It will have that force forward, left or right or backwards. So that is our movement direction. And we're simply assigning that to the rotation, which will make it look at the movement direction. Now, while we're at it, I'm also going to create here public void player attack function. And simply here, I'm going to say anim dot attack and voila, it will call the animation attack to play from within the anim script. Simple as that. But for this, we need to attach it on the attack button. So click on the attack button and go here, click on the plus button to add on click event and drag and drop our lay. From the drop down list, you're gonna select here in the player movement player attack function. Now, of course, when you are creating your own game, you're not gonna do it like this. You're probably gonna have a separate script to handle the button presses. And if you need something like this, you will do it from within the script. You will find the button here. So you will be, you'll do something like game object dot find button and you will say that get component and it will say here button component but we need to use here unity engine dot ui and you're gonna say here dot button component so button and you're gonna say that on click dot add listener and you're simply gonna attack attack you're simply gonna pass the function that you are going to add which is our player attack so this also works as well. So this works as well, but you need to na name your button button. In our case, it's attack button. So we can copy that and we can paste it here and voila. So this on click add listener will add the player attack function to. So we don't need to do this. We don't need to select it and we can remove this right here. We can say minus. Voila, that is that. So this will have the same effect. And if I hit the play button right now, and if I click here to attack, you see it is attacking because that code attached that function to the button. Even though the list here is empty during runtime, it did it. And now if I select or actually click on the joystick, you see our character is moving. You see the character is moving and he's rotating towards the direction where he is going. Again, moving and rotating and voila. This is how we can apply a joystick in our game. And this works on mobile just export this for Android or iOS, whatever you have, and put the game or upload the game, put, man, just transfer the game with USB on your phone and press your finger on the joystick here and this will work. And just a quick breakdown of the code. This right here is self-explanatory. Explanatory. We have the rigid body, the forces, the joystick, the animators. We are getting their references here. We're simply using or finding the button in the scene, getting the component button on click, add listener, adding the name of the function that we want to be executed. It's the same thing as if we go here, click on the press, press plus button, and then attach a game object, same as what we are doing in all of my tutorials. And here we're simply using the joystick horizontal to move the game object on the horizontal, multiply that with the move force, of course. The Y velocity will stay the same when we're doing the Z velocity vertical. So yeah, and checking here if we are pressing the, the joystick, if we're not pressing, we will have a value zero. If we're pressing, the value will not be equal to zero. We will animate the game object. We will make him look to the direction where he is facing. Otherwise, we will not animate him. Voila.
this is our joystick tutorial how you can add a joystick in your game don't forget to download the asset link is in the description below you can download this complete project as well like the video share comment and subscribe to the channel turn on notifications for more videos and i will see you guys in another video